One thing you'll be asked to do on the ACT is to solve simple equations. These are equations where you have one unknown value that you need to solve for. While you could solve some of these by sight, remember that it pays to know how to set up and solve easy questions correctly so the harder ones seem less complicated. Let's start by looking at an easy one. For instance, we might be asked to solve the equation x over 2 equals 10. You can solve this by cross multiplication if you adjust the equation to be x over 2 equals 10 over 1. If we cross multiply over our equal sign like we learned to in the ratios lesson, we find that 1x equals 20, or x equals 20. Now let's take a look at how algebra shows up on the exam. What is the value of a when 6a minus 1 is equal to 2 times the quantity of a plus 1? a is 3 eighths b is 3 fourths, c is 1 half, d is 0, and e is 5 over 2. We'll underline the facts, circle the keywords, and label the answer choices. Start by writing our equation. 6a minus 1 is equal to 2 times a plus 1. We can simplify the right side by distributing the 2 to get 2a plus 2. Next, we want to get our terms with a in them on the same side. So let's subtract 2a from both sides to get 4a minus 1 equals 2. To solve for a, we'll just add 1 to both sides and then divide by 4 to get a equals 3 fourths, which is choice B. Of course, we could have solved that problem using our old friend back solving just as easily, but we wanted to get some practice doing algebra in this lesson. Let's take a look at one more algebra problem and use the picking numbers strategy this time. However, I'm going to make this a pause and solve, so you can work it out on your own before we go through it together. Grab some paper and a pencil, and when I say pause, you'll pause the video and solve the problem. Come back when you're done. Here's the question. If the smallest of three consecutive integers is x, which of the following expressions represents their sum? The answer choices represent the sum of the three integers. Ready, set, pause. All right, how was that? Let's go through it together. As usual, we'll underline the facts, circle the keywords, and label the answer choices. Since we have variables in the question and the answer choices, let's pick numbers. Let's say x equals 3. That means that our three consecutive integers are 3, 4, and 5, and that their sum is 12. Circle that. It's what you'll be looking for in the answer choices. Now, if we plug in x equals 3 into each answer choice, we get that answer choice A is 9, which doesn't work. B is 6, which also doesn't work. C turns out to be 10, which still doesn't work. D does match, since 3 times 3 plus 3 is 12. Just to be sure, we'll try E. 3 times 3 plus 6 equals 15. That doesn't work. So D it is. You get a shiny trophy for that one. Picking numbers made more sense than working out the problem using algebra in this case. In the earlier problem we looked at, back solving would have been just as effective. These are both great test taking strategies, but knowing how to write your own algebra problems is a necessary skill. So make sure you know how to do it in cases when back solving and picking numbers are more time consuming.